Yo, what is up guys? We are back today for another live in the NU tier. We are continuing with our NU run instead of RU. Just because I feel like I've exasperated a lot of the Pokemon in RU and I don't really want to uh, dive too deep into the tier. I want to keep it as a surprise and bring it up from time to time. But NU has such a deep pool of Pokemon that I can explore and use different sets and things like that. I was kind of pressed for time for this one. So what I did was uh, took a page out of Blunder's book. Uh, his suggestion video, I went into the replays for the SPL for Season 7, and uh, I grabbed a team used by Soul Gazer, a really good NU player, and uh, this was his team. I didn't actually get to see two of the sets. Actually, most of the stuff that he used, there was like banned Pokemon like Sceptile and Sock, which are no longer allowed in the NU tier, they're BL3. So, uh, I had to find one team where it wasn't, uh, not everything was banned, but two of his Pokemon, well, one didn't make the field, and the other one, uh, got O-Code, pretty much. So, two of the sets I didn't really know, but I could gauge based on the damage and based on the team composition, more or less, what they would be. So, if you guys see the team, we have, a uh, Garbodor. It's rocking a Shooka Berry, so it can take, uh, ground hits. We don't have any EVs on here. I'm gonna pause and get the EVs on here, obviously. Uh, we should have them on most of the Pokemon, though. Uh, but as far as the Garbodor set, I took this, um, I took this set from the, well actually that's just quick editing right now. We'll just do this, you guys get to see, uh, where you can get sets from if you're on Pokemon Showdown. And, uh, I'm gonna grab this one, I'm gonna replace Seed Bomb by Drain Punch, cause it makes more sense on the team. Uh, Drain Punch, and we are Shooka Berry. There we go, we'll get rid of this Rocky Helmet and put a Shooka on. Be able to take ground hits, which the team relatively deals with well. It has Zatu and Rotom, but uh, I think this was more uh, for a specific matchup. So you know what? Actually, let's keep Rocky Helmet. It'd be a nice physical tank. We have 200 defense, so I don't know what the 56 speed is to outspeed, but we'll figure out. Uh, we'll figure it out along the way. So then we have our Magic Bounce Life Orb Zatu from uh, the replay that I saw. It seemed to take a lot of damage from a Sceptile and Power Rock on a crit. So I figured it didn't have any HP investment. It's a very good Pokemon with Grass Knot, Psychic, Heat Wave. Basically, this coverage like beats almost the entire tier. And then you have a Roost, of course. You have a Choice Scarf Rotom over here. Basic set, Volt Switch, uh, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt Trick. Uh, Poly Wrath, which is special, which is really cool because it gets uh, a priority move in Vacuum Wave. So that's really nice. Pillow Swine, that's a Rock Setter with uh, Earthquake, Icicle Crash, and Ice Shard. And finally, we have a Rampardos. This is the one Pokemon who said I really didn't get to see at all. And uh, I assumed that it wasn't Choice Scarf just because Rotom was. Uh, it could also have been Choice Scarf, but uh, I feel like it was more a Life Orb set uh, as, it, uh, as it wasn't another Choice Scarf on the team, obviously. So that's pretty much it for the team. Now we can get a battle, and uh, I'll probably pause it until we get one, guys, because NU doesn't have too many people flooding it at this hour. So be right back. All right, so we got one, and um, there's a suspect test going on right now with uh, NU for speed boost plus baton pass. Uh, so as you can see, our opponent forfeits and gives us free points. We go up by 43. So we'll get another one, but I just wanted to explain that because of the fact that we're lower ladder, I should be able to get uh, games relatively quickly. So it shouldn't be too bad, as you guys can see. Now, this guy is extremely rock so weak. I just like want to get up my rocks as soon as possible. Uh, why am I using this team? Hold on a second, guys. We'll be right back. All right, there we go. Now we got one for real, and uh, it's a different team, obviously, because uh, we were using our team from the last NU Live for a second there. For some reason, it didn't take this one. Normally, it goes in automatically, but anyway. Uh, this guy is not so weak to rocks, and he's also got a Malamar, which is a little bit of a threat, especially to this team. So I'm uh, tempted to just lead with uh, Zatu, actually, because it covers the Smeargle lead, so he can't get up hazards on me, and I'll be able to fire off a very big Psychic or Heat Wave, depending on if I think he's going to switch into Malamar or not. He can also lead with Golurk, but uh, that thing gets destroyed by a Grass Knot, so... He chooses to lead with Electivire, which is a very good lead on his part. I can just go into Pillow Swine on this. I very much doubt he would go for anything other than an Electric move on the first turn. It's his best play. He's able to get out of here relatively easily. And I can get a free switch into my Pillow Swine right now. He goes for an Ice Punch. It does absolutely nothing. I guess he was trying to cover the switch with that. And I can just go for... Well, actually, his entire team is grounded. I'm just going to go for an EQ right here. I'm not even going to bother with Rocks right now. Because if he switches in something that can take an EQ, then I can set up Rocks on that after. So... It's not a big deal. Uh, hopefully he switches into, like, Combuskin or something. That would be the best. But uh, more than likely, I could see Smeargle coming out, which would be great if we could bring that thing down to its Sash. I'm pretty sure Pilliswine is very strong. Yeah, it's 328 attack, which is basically a, uh, a base 100 um, with max attack. Is that what we are? Hold on. 
Yeah, we are. We are we're at him at max attack. So he's base 100. So Pillowswine is nothing to laugh at. As you can see, we take that Fire Punch, no problem. And we're able to knock out the Electivire right back. So that's great. Uh, he can go into his Malamar, but we have a Zatu, so he can't spam Super Power as long as we have that thing alive. Uh, he would more than likely go for a knockoff on the first turn. I kind of want to just go into Polyrath to scout what he's going to go for first. Uh, and he does choose to go for Super Power, actually, so that's fine. Uh, hopefully he's Choice Lock, because or else that could be a little bit of an issue. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just Scald right here. And uh, hopefully get a burn. As we do, actually, get a burn. And he's Lum. Okay, so he's not... Uh, it's confirmed he's not choice, so which means we don't have to worry about a scarf. Um, which means Rotom can deal with this thing. So can Garbodor actually, but he has uh, the psychic type move. So I think that Rotom is our best play overall, uh, and maybe just full switch on this thing, and then go into Zatu, predicting him to. Well, he would go for a knockoff, right? So maybe, maybe Volt Switch, and go into our Garbodor. Because either way, as soon as he hits us, he gets knocked out, basically. Uh, he takes the Rocky Helmet, and then he takes the following hit from the uh, from the Psycho Cut. So, we should be good to go. Um, obviously, I'm going to attempt to get up Spikes right here, as we are actually faster. So, maybe that's what this thing's speed is for. Uh, to outspeed uh, regular speed Malamar, like no investment. That's pretty cool. And he uh, goes for the Psycho Cut. Now, we can pretty much outspeed this thing with, uh, with anything now that we know that Garbodor outsped it. And he only has one... Uh, electric resist so I'm gonna go into Rotom and I'm gonna fire off a shadow ball hoping that he really hoping he switches into his uh, his Golurk but he doesn't he just sacks off his Malamar which is a good play uh, even if he goes into Smeargle I still have the Zatu so I'm not worried the only problem now the only issue is the Audino that can definitely be a problem but we still have our uh, Rampardos in the back and that can just like punch holes through his team so I think it does about 40% to Golurk I'm just going like off the top of my head but Let's say we take Rampardos, uh, PU Wall Breaker, because that's what we are, versus a Golurk, and you Stealth Rock. Yeah, Rock Slide does 46 to 55, guys. That's a resisted hit, so. <laughs> and we have Ice Beam, too, which is really good. And, uh, yeah, so this should go okay from here on out. He goes into his Smeargle. Again, like I said, I, I just have to switch into Zatu so that he can't go for any shenanigans with this thing. And uh, he does go for the score. It's going to bounce right back. And we're going to put his Smeargle to sleep. Yay, Zatu. <laughs> Gotta love having this thing around, man. I'm just going to go for a Psychic right here. Smeargle is now asleep. It's no longer a threat. So I can pretty much spam Shadow Ball with uh, Rotom very soon. We're going to knock it out with the Psychic right there. Life Orb. And uh, there goes that. Now we just have to deal with the Autono, like I said. I will not switch into my Rampardos into the Autono. But he chooses to go into Golurk. And I'm actually curious. Does Zatu take this thing out? Zatu, and you offensive with the Grass Knot versus Golurk. Yeah, it actually does 101 min, so we should be faster than this thing, barring no Scarf, of course, and knock it out with the Grass Knot. So he sacks off his Golurk for no reason, and that's good because now we can even Volt Switch or Thunderbolt on his whole team. So it's looking good, guys. It's looking like we might be able to pick up a win. This team is really, really good. It's uh, it's not surprising, of course. It's Soul Gazer's team, but. Still, I wasn't expecting it to do this well. I like to, to use other people's teams sometimes. Like it's it's cool to build and all, and I think that's where you gain your uh, that's where you get the most experience in Pokemon. Is if you're really good at building, then you're really good at the game in general. Because playing is only like 20% of the game realistically. So I'm gonna just Psychic here just to gauge the damage. As it only does 24. We do get the Specs drop though. So uh, he's gonna go for Dazzling Gleam. It's not gonna do much. Uh, and he just lost his Regenerator now. So I'm just gonna go for the Roost. And, um, what does Healer do as an ability? I'm curious. Let's check that out. Let's go back into the Team Builder, go into Autono, uh, Dino, Mega. What does Healer do? Healer, uh, 30% uh, chance of curing an adjacent ally. Okay, so it's a doubles OU thing. Um, so he just goes for another Dazzling Gleam right there. He gets a crit on that turn. Doesn't really matter. I can just keep spamming Roost until he doesn't get a crit. And uh, then we will be up to full. We'll be able to take two of his uh, two of his dazzling gleams and hit him with a psychic. And hopefully he doesn't crit this one because that would really suck. I don't think it actually takes us out. It maybe does like 52. So we should be good to live it. Actually, no, after the, uh, the life orb, we wouldn't have been good to live that. But I can keep roosting up and uh, just wait until this thing... Bas basically until I get back up to enough health to... Uh, 
to knock this thing out in the subsequent Combuskin. Combuskin can still put in work, but not while I have a Mammoth Swine, I don't think. It's thick fat, so I should be able to take any one hit. As he actually chooses to switch out into it now, which is good because his Audino comes back in and it's pretty much KO'd by anything. Uh, I'm just going to go for the Roost again on what I'm expecting to be a Protect, exactly. And now he shouldn't be able to take me out and Psychic should nuke this thing, even if it's Eviolite. It's Life Orb Psychic. So, goodbye Combuskin, and it actually still wasn't faster than us, so that's really funny. Uh, I know Combuskin's relatively slow, it's like base 50, I think? Let's see. Uh, we're learning here, we're learning as we go along, guys. Combuskin... Uh, it's base 55, so it was close. Uh, he's gonna forfeit the match right there, obviously we had that under control. We are low ladder still, but that guy was actually pretty good, he knew what he was doing. Why do we have two versions of this? Okay, yeah, no, that's the auto, no. Alright, so we're uh, gonna try to pick up another one really quickly. Like I said, we're at the bottom of the ladder because of the suspect test. As a result, it's really easy to get games because pretty much everybody that's playing is at the bottom of the ladder. So, uh, let's see right here, we check out active battles, let's see, and you, you guys will see right away, there's only 11 battles going on, but if you look at the rating, it's a thousand, 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 thousand twenty-four, which is around where we are, a thousand, thousand, so, it's, it's gonna be really easy to get a game, as soon as somebody's done, we'll be able to get another one, so, until that happens, I'll pause it, guys, never mind, we got one, that always happens, I swear, <laughs> anyway, this guy's using a really cool, really cool team. Uh, Vivillion, which still isn't moving. Neither is Gastrodon, apparently. It doesn't have its, uh, its moving sprite. Uh, we have, uh, Zatu. Uh, the Amistar is an issue. Uh, I see it right away being an issue to the team. Because if it gets up a, sh a Shell Smash, we're pretty much donezo. Uh, I'm just gonna lead with my Rotom, because it has a good lead matchup against everything, including this, because it can't fake me out. So I'm just gonna Volt Switch out here. I am not switching into Zatu because he can knock me off, so what I'll do is I'll just go into Polyrath here, actually. Polyrath is fine. I don't mind if I get my leftovers knocked off. It's all good. And uh, then we can follow that up with a uh, big Focus Blast, actually, that should be able to hit pretty much anything on his team, and including this thing. So his Hariyama has a Citrus Berry, goes for Cross Chop, and he gets a crit. So goodbye us. And um, now we're kind of forced into our Zatu right here. Obviously he has his own, so he can definitely take hits. Uh, alternatively, I can just go into Rotom and just fire off a Thunderbolt, I think, is fine. Uh, you could have Bullet Punch, though. So, I am just going to go Zatu. I, de I definitely need to keep my Rotom because the Pavilion's a problem. So I need something that can outspeed it. I don't know if I actually do outspeed it after a speed boost. Uh, he actually chooses to go into his, um, into his Cacturn right here. And I'm pretty sure I don't live a Sucker Punch. So, maybe Garbodor? Yeah, Garbodor is the play, definitely, every time. He goes for Sucker, so he's not able to hit us. And, uh, what's taking these Toxic Spikes, man? He goes for Spiky Shield? That's not gonna work on me, bro. And, uh, now we can actually fire off a Gunk Shot right here. And potentially poison something. He goes into a Zatu. We actually miss Gunk Shot, unfortunately. And I definitely have to switch out here, because I will not be able to take this Psychic hit. And I'm just gonna go Rotom. Again, he does not have a Volt Switch switching. He goes for Future Sight, actually. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to fire off a Volt Switch, honestly. He doesn't have anything that wants to take this. If this thing is offensive, it should die to a Volt Switch, realistically. From 289, uh, this thing has no defense when it's not bulky, so. Let's see, Zatu, NU Offensive, against Rotom, NU Choice Scarf. Yeah, Volt Switch has a very good chance to KO, as he actually protects that turn. And we're just going to Volt Switch again. He doesn't really have a Pokemon to switch into at this point. And uh, I can just... I can pretty much bring in my Zatu on his future site, which is going to hit next turn. Uh, that is not going to do enough, so that's definitely... Uh, definitely a... Um, a defensive variant, as he actually knocks us out with the combination of uh, future site and air slash, so that was really surprising. Uh, but it's fine, we didn't really need Zatu. Uh, it didn't do too much for us. Again, it's still going to be Rotom to finish up this game. I'm just going to Volt Switch here. It's fine. Uh, he's just going to protect to see what I'm going to go for, but it doesn't really matter because I'm getting this Volt Switch off one way or another. And uh, luckily, we poison about four things on his team. So uh, this thing should go down to the poison, exactly. And here, I want to go... I really want to go into Pillow Swine here. I feel like it's my best play. Because I can take a hit from pretty much anything, including Zatu. Now that I know it's Future Sight, it's a lot easier to, ha to, to deal with. So, and uh, I want to prevent the Amistar from Shell Smashing, just like straight off the bat. 
I don't think he knocks me out with any one move. Let's just check uh, Amistar choice specs. Because I know that's a set. Uh, it's definitely one in OU. Let's check for Pilliswine. No, we shouldn't get knocked out, should we? Actually, we do, yeah. Okay, so knowing that, and knowing the fact that he's faster than us, I think I have to sack Rampardos here because it doesn't outspeed anything. Yeah. I'm just gonna go into Rampardos as he goes for a Surf. Does Surf knock us out? Okay, he's Life Orb, so he's not Choice Specs, and he just went for a Surf. Uh, where's Life Orb here? Life Orb and Surf. Does that knock me out? Yeah, it still has the potential to. So I definitely just need to go to Rotom here. And I just need to click Volt Switch again. I'm pretty sure it takes this thing out as its special defense is not all that. It has 70, so should be able to, to handle that. There we go, and Amistar is dealt with. And now he's running out of answers for Pillow Swine, so. His Zatu is weakened. His Cacturn can only do so much damage to us. His Avilion is extremely frail and should go down to two Ice Shards, so he won't be able to get up a Quiver on us. And uh, finally, there is the Zangoose, which I believe goes down to... Volt Switch plus Thunderbolt plus the Toxic Spike, two rounds. Yeah, so we should be good to win this game as well. It's uh, very methodical, but I'm pretty sure we can take this. Uh, he goes into his Zatu. Did we see leftovers on this thing? We did, eh? Okay, so I'm going to go just straight for the Icicle Crash here. He's going to go for Protect. Maybe he thinks that I don't have the, uh, the Ice Shard, and I want to see if it actually kills. It should to a Zatu. Let's say he's the defensive pivot or whatever. Um, Ice Shard does 34 to 41, so not enough. I have to go for the Crash right here as he goes for the Giga Drain. So we are going to be able to knock out this Zatu right here with the Icicle Crash, but we did get our Pillow Swine weakened, and he still has two more Pokemon that could potentially still hit us very hard. Actually, I would consider all three to be able to hit us very hard. I'm curious to see how much Cacturn actually does to us. because I know it has very high base attack. Uh, 267, Giga Drain. Actually, it's usually run... Uh, special. I have to see, did it go for any moves on us earlier? And we just went for Sucker, right? Does it typically run Sucker on this set? Yeah, it does. It still does. Okay. Well, uh, Cacturn, I have a wall in Garbodor, so I'm not too worried about it. Again, Vivillion should go down to two Ice Shards. Again, we can calc that. Vivillion, Quiver Dance. As you can see, Ice Shard times two kicks it out. And it does carry the Energy Ball, but that doesn't nowhere near enough to us. It only does 38 to 45. So, we should be able to go for the Ice Shard right here, as he takes 72%. He's going to go for the Sleep Powder, which is very threatening. It's very scary. Um, again, I don't think Rotom outspeed. Actually, Rotom does outspeed. Awesome. So, he can go for a Quiver right here, but it doesn't matter, because we are able to outspeed this thing and just fire off a Volt Switch. So, we're all good. Very nice. Scarf Rotom at 309 speed. Excellent. That's, uh, that's clutch right there, guys. And uh, we are going to need Pilliswine to wake up, I think. Uh, or else his Zangoose is a problem. I still have the Aftermath on our um, on our Garbodor, but I really, really, really need to take out his Cacturn before I can do anything. So let's go into Pilliswine. As we know, he can have the Giga Drain on the, um, on the Cacturn, but it's not a problem. He chooses to go into his... Zangoose, so I'm actually kind of reg regretting getting up that Toxic Spike. Uh, I broke a, pot a potential Sash on Amistar and was able to take out Hariyama so that it couldn't uh, hit us back with anything, but let's see, how much does Zangoose do with a Facade? Zangoose. Oops, that's not it. Zangoose. And you all out Attacker. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Okay. So, yeah. We need to go directly into Rotom, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go directly into Rotom. As he goes for a knockoff, so good play on his part. We just lost our Rotom, unfortunately. And uh, I need to go back into Pillow Swine here. And I just need to Earthquake. I have to, uh, to hope that this is uh, uh, that I live whatever move he goes for. Knockoff doesn't take us out. He should have known that. He would have taken extra damage that he didn't need to take. So that's really... It's really strange that he went for that. Because Garbodor can 1v1 his, uh, his Cacturn. So it's very confusing as to why he did that. Also, um, Garbodor, can you take this thing on? You take 84 to 100, but you also hit back for 54 to 64. He goes for a knockoff. That's not going to take us out. He's giving us a chance to wake up and ice shard him. 
So that's going to be extremely important because now he's down to just 27%, which means we definitely take him out with the Drain Punch, and his facade has a chance to not kill us. So I'm actually kind of regretting going for that just now. He's going to take the Rocky Helmet. We're going to be able to Drain Punch this back. And um, now we're in a little bit of trouble, though, because I think this thing can just Sucker Punch us and win. Cac, turn. How much do you do to us? Uh, you do 31 to 36. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's pretty much game. Unless he's not faster. He has spiky shield. That's what he goes for here. Um, I'm gonna go for spikes. Just in case he wants to sucker punch us. We'll see. We might be able to outplay this. Yeah, he goes for sucker. Which is kind of telling me that he might not have any offensive move other than sucker punch. If he hasn't gone for it yet. I'm just going to keep going for spikes as he keeps sucker punching. Right, is this going to be like another another Jirachi versus Bisharp situation where we just call it right on the right turn? He just keeps going for sucker. I have no reason not to click spikes until he shows an, another offensive move, which I think he's about to right here. Yeah, he's got the seed bomb. So he's going to take the, uh, the life orb damage and he's not going to take the rocky helmet or anything after that. So that's going to be a good game. I could have drained punch right there. I'm assuming we were faster just by the way he was playing it. Uh, he probably knows sets a little bit better than I do, but unfortunately we weren't able to pick up that win right there because he made a very nice prediction on the Rotom, and uh, that's going to be that. But we are be going to be able to get a third battle, hopefully a lot quicker. And new battles tend to last a little bit longer just because uh, Pokemon are sometimes harder to kill if they're walls, and offensive threats don't hit actually as hard as they do in OEU, so... It's very easy to get a sweep if you have the right kind of Pokemon on your team, like a Scyther or something like that, but I think... Is Scyther banned now? No, Scyther's still allowed. It's Sceptile and what, what was the other one that we said? Sock that are banned. All these S Pokemon. But, um, yeah, guys, so um, again, I'm just going to pause it until we get one and uh, be right back. Alright, guys, so we got one, and this guy's got pretty much like every... Well, not every threat, but he's got a Pyro, and Pyro is very, 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 very scary. <laughs> so... I think, uh, I think Polyrath puts in a lot of work this game, uh, other than the Mantine, which is a little bit of an issue. Everything else, it pretty much uh, handles relatively well. So, I'm tempted to just lead with Rotom again, as he leads with his throw, which is fine. I'm just going to go for a Volt Switch. Uh, I don't see him switching into his Piloswine, to be honest, because we could be Wisp. So, that would pretty much hinder his Piloswine for the rest of the game. He does choose to go into Pyroar, predicting the Wisp. And we're going to get off the Volt Switch right here. And uh, we have nothing faster than this thing. Yay! <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go into Rampardos because I can eat up any hit. Uh, we don't have the best special defense, but it is a resist. Thus, resist so you live. Um, I could go for Super Power right here. I think his best switch is probably Throw. So I'm just going to go for the Rock Slide. Again, both of his stabs are resisted. I don't think this thing gets any grass moves. It does get Dark Pulse, but that's not going to be enough. Unless he flinches us, of course. So that's, uh, that's hacks in his favor, unfortunately. That did 49.3. Please don't get the roll. He doesn't, and we are able to get off the rock slide and kill the Pyroar. Awesome, so we didn't even need our Scarfer to knock out the Pyroar. We can even keep our Rampart uh, Rampartos if we choose to. Uh, if he predicts us to be choiced in some way, he's going to go into his... Well, he should have seen... Yeah, no, he didn't see a Life Orb because we're Sheer Force. Uh, if he predicts us to be choiced in some way, he might go Piloswine and try to get up rocks. Uh, in which case, I will keep Rampartos. I will more than likely go into Zatu, get up rocks on his side, and then maybe go back into Rampardos. Alternatively, I could also just superpower the Piloswine and get off a lot of damage on it, let him get up rocks, and then just deal with it later. Uh, I don't have any rock removers, but most of my Pokemon have leftovers anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, I definitely need the Zatu for the throw. That's pretty much the only thing on my team that can deal with it. He does choose to go into Piloswine, so I am just going to superpower right here. He's going to choose to Ice Shard, so he's Life Orb. Okay, not a set you see very often, but um, I can go, what I'll do here is I'll go into Polyrath, I'll bait out the Mantine, and I'll follow it up by going into my uh, my Rotom right here. He should switch out. Yeah, there we go, there's the Mantine, and we will go for a Shadow Ball here on this turn, as he chooses to stay in on a potential Volt Switch, so very unorthodox play. I guess he knows we're Scarfed at this point. Uh, I'm going to go into Zatu. Because um, I can take on the Pillow Swine, I guess. Uh, he's not Eviolite. We know this. So, 
pile of swine and you tank versus um, versus Zatu, right? Zatu offensive. Grass not normally does that much without the Eviolite. It's doing a lot more. And then if he has no HP investment, we're nearly knocking him out. We're definitely knocking him out after the Life Orb, or almost. Uh, let's just go for the Grass Knot, honestly. Does 79%, so we get off a lot of damage right there. He's gonna go for Stealth Rocks, it's gonna bounce back right at him. And now he's gonna go for the Ice Shard, so I'm gonna go into Polyrath. And then I'm just gonna fire off a fighting move. There's the Ice Shard, and uh, he's gonna take that damage. We're gonna go for the Vacuum Wave, as he can no longer come back in on rocks. His only Defogger being the Mantine. He could have gone into it, but I mean, keeping a 2%. Uh, Pillow Swine is not the best idea. Uh, this thing doesn't get any residual recovery, so uh, any re reliable recovery, I mean. So I'm just gonna go for the Ice Beam, and uh, he's gonna be able to eat it up very well, unfortunately. I can see him going for either an Air Slash or a Toxic right here. So I might just want to, yeah, I'm gonna, just gonna go to Rotom because he can't really touch me other than with Scald. So he's gonna go for the Air Slash, and now we get off a free Bolt Switch. And something has to take this, basically. I'm assuming his throw is going to come in. So there's that. And uh, he's going to take that like a champ, obviously, because that thing is ridiculously bulky. And um, now... Now I kind of just want to get up rocks, to be honest. And just threaten the pincer and the mantine. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't care if this thing is a fighting type in front of me. I'm just going to go for stealth rocks. Unless it's banded, uh, which it could be because I don't see an item. But I think it's this thing is re really slow. Yeah, I'm gonna get up my rocks right here. He's gonna go for power up punch. It's gonna do relatively nothing. Um, and we can switch into Zatu at any time. I'm not gonna do it right here because that's really predictable. I'm just gonna go for the EQ. As he goes for a storm throw, that's gonna crit because it always crits. And now we're gonna be able to take this thing out with a another earthquake. And goodbye throw. So now we don't need our we don't need our um, our Zatu as much. And if he goes into Mantine right here, I'm just going to Icicle Crash because he's more than likely going to just Defog to get the rocks away. He's actually going to Scald, so he's going to allow us to bring back in our Rotom and Volt Switch again. So rocks are here to stay, which means this Pinsir takes a lot of damage. And we can go into our Zatu right here, I think is fine. Yeah, Zatu's fine. We can Heat Wave the Pinsir, and if he chooses to go into his Mesprit, then we will... Uh, more than likely sack uh, our Polyrath because we don't need it anymore. And um, then we will proceed to go into Rotom and Shadow Ball. And he actually goes for Calm Mind right there. So that's, uh, that's a good play on his part. I like that play. Um, I can almost trick him into it. I'm just going to go for Scald. Attempt to get a burn right here. And we do get a burn. So he's going to go for another Calm Mind right there. Uh, it's not really going to matter now. I'm just going to Scald again. And uh, with the burn, with the residual damage, we, uh, we're pretty much good to knock this thing out with a Shadow Ball. So he goes for Psy Shock, he's going to be able to take us out. I just want to calc this real quick because Mesprit's really, really bul bulky. Uh, Mesprit, uh, offensive three attacks, let's say, versus Rotom. Rotom and you Choice Scarf. Uh, Shadow Ball normally does 67, so at plus two Spit F, he can, excuse me, he cannot take it. Uh, but if he has more bulk than I'm expecting him to have, then that could be a problem. So, what I'll do is I'll go into Rotom. I will Volt Switch on this thing. So, Shadow Ball would have definitely taken him out there, as we can see. I'm going to go into Zatu, because Zatu still outspeeds this thing. He's going to go for Psy Shock. It's not going to be able to knock us out. He actually gets a crit right there. And we will just go for the... I think I might switch and just keep this thing for Pinsir, just to Heat Wave it. I know it's a 90% chance to hit, but I think that's relatively a good play. And I might just sack Rotom here. Yeah, I'm just going to sack Rotom. So this thing's Life Orb hit. Uh, actually, yeah, it does have a Life Orb. <laughs> I was like questioning myself there. Did I, did I not see Life Orb on that thing just now? So yeah. Down goes the Mesprit, and now all we have to deal with is the Pinsir, of course. Which should take a tremendous amount of damage from this Heat Wave. As he is Scarf, then he goes for Stone Edge. Um... So that's a problem. Uh, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of defense though, so I'm just gonna go for the gunk shot. He's gonna go for another edge. We are able to take that, and we miss gunk shot as usual. And he's not missing edges, guys. He's just not missing any of them. And uh, we're not able to get the poison. If he lands this one, we lose. So 
Unfortunately, Edge, uh, Stone Edge has a lot more accuracy than Gunk Shot, apparently, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. We learned a lot about the team. It's a very good team. I think I uh, misplayed there at the end, not predicting the Scarf Pincer, to be honest. Uh, I think I probably should have just switched directly into my Garbodor. Um, and again, I should have just predicted him to be Scarfed, so... That's, uh, you, you live and you learn. I didn't know Pinsir was typically run that way in this tier. Uh, I thought it was more like a, well, I guess he already had a Stealth Rocker and Pillow Swine, right? So, oh well, uh, that's going to be it for, uh, for today. If you guys enjoyed, of course, leave a like down below. Uh, leave a, uh, hit that subscribe button. It's in the description. It's also, uh, the big red button underneath the, uh, underneath my screen right now. And uh, also leave a comment for me if you want to use uh, if you want me to use any uh, funky sets in NU basically in any tier uh, doesn't really matter I'll find a way to make it work uh, try to build a team around it if you have any teams for me that'd be really appreciated send me send some teams my way and uh, yeah that's pretty much gonna wrap it up guys thanks again for watching and ciao.